The Catholic Church is softening its stance on same-sex unions in a radical change in policy. As KTV's Christian Catherine reports, Pope Francis has now formally approved blessings for same-sex couples. In a papal declaration, Pope Francis has given the go-ahead for priests to offer blessings for what he calls couples in irregular situations and couples of the same sex. Any such blessing would not be a formal blessing as for a marriage, which the church still says is between a man and a woman. The document goes on to say a blessing for a same-sex union is not a formal liturgical rite, but that the church should recognize those who humbly turn to God. This video is brought to you by Birch Gold Group, brought to you by Birch Gold Group. Listen, Vladimir Putin called the U.S. dollar's drop in dominance objective and irreversible as Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa formally agree to use local currency in trading instead of the U.S. dollar. It's the first shoe to fall. Trust me, ladies and gentlemen, as demand of the dollar weakens, the buying power of the dollar weakens. That's why Birch Gold Group is busier than ever. Investors and savers are looking to harness the power of physical gold held in a tax-sheltered IRA. You can too. Text Brandon to 989898 for your free info kit on gold with thousands of happy customers and A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and countless five-star reviews. You can count on Birch Gold to help you navigate transitioning an existing IRA or 401k into an IRA in gold. As the U.S. dollar continues to receive pressure from foreign countries, digital currency, and central banks, arm yourself with information on how to protect your savings. Text Brandon to 989898 to claim your free info kit today. If you don't believe that the world is coming to an end, uh, get from up under that rock because it's on its way. When you see the Catholic Church, the head of the Catholic Church, what's his name? Pope. Nick, Pope Francis. Going straight to hell. He probably the first one going to be there. Pope Francis is one of the most disgraceful popes that I've heard of. According to what I was told, he's now allowing, bishops and priests are now allowed to bless same-sex couples. Roman Catholics worldwide reacting to a seismic shift from the Vatican. Pope Francis now permitting Roman Catholic priests to bless same-sex marriages. And I think that's a great step forward. I think that's wonderful news, to be honest. We, are, we just, the Bible just says that it's not, um, that you shouldn't do that, so yeah. The Pope's approval reverses the church's position from just two years ago when it said it could not bless same-sex couples, saying because God does not bless sin. It's a major step forward for LGBTQ Catholics, and it's really the first time uh, that there's been any sort of opening to blessing same-sex couples, so it's a big deal. The new Vatican ruling allows same-sex marriages to be blessed separately from regular church rituals, a distinction underscoring the church's unchanged stance on marriage, defining it only as between a man and a woman. In his 10 years as Pope, Francis has prioritized making the 1.3 billion member church more inclusive. The LGBTQ plus advocacy group GLAD releasing a statement pointing out the Pope's new ruling stops short of allowing priests to perform same-sex weddings or civil unions, but also saying it shows that LGBTQ people are worthy of love, respect, and compassion. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. I wouldn't be shocked if the Pope is not the Antichrist. I don't know. But y'all better stop following these men that are leading you straight to hell. That ain't, there ain't nowhere in the Bible where that makes sense. But yet this man who controls the entire Catholic Church is arbitrarily on his own accord rewriting the scripture. That's why, and I'm not trying to bash the Catholic Church. I really am not because there's a lot of Catholic people that are great people. But y'all got to stop being bamboozled by stuff that ain't biblical. There's no reason that one man should have been in charge of this stuff anyway. The only person that's in charge of the church is Christ. When you start letting men dictate and navigate what God has already established, you're going to be you're going to be off 
because when they off, you off now. If your priest, whom you have to say confessions to, is of diddling boys, then where your confession going? Because he it ain't going to God. That man don't have a connection. He probably ain't had a connection the last 25 years. And you trusted in that man. To, the Bible says that you go straight to Christ is the mediator, not your priest. But people still following these, these religions. That if you if you are if you are a Catholic today, at least you should say, I don't really I ain't doing the Pope thing. I may like like my local diocese or whatever you call it, cathedrals, diocese. But I ain't fooling with the Pope. I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but I know that, that whatever he doing ain't right. The love of money is the root of all evil. I, all the money from the Catholic Church goes straight to the the uh, Vatican. Well, it, a lot of it do, because I looked at the Vatican, and I said, God dang, that's the uh, that building got to be worth, I don't know how much, look, look it up, 10 to $15 billion facility. What, what, like, at what point does that make any sense? That's called man-made stuff. It's a man-made religious theology. Man created. All the power goes to one central location. Building worth $15 billion. It, because they go up and beyond the problem, crystals and all that stuff they put in the Vatican. And people out here hurting. The Catholic Church is worth $30 billion. The Catholic Church is worth $30 billion. And how much they pay the priest? Minimum wage. 30, What's the average of a priest? We'll look it up for you guys that are listening. That place, the, the Catholic Church is worth thirty billion. Twenty-one, uh, thirty-eight to fifty-five k a year. That's poverty in comparison. And and the Pope drive around with the armored glass up there, and they treat him like he's Jesus Christ on earth. I mean, maybe to the Catholics, he is Jesus Christ on earth. Or like his right right hand man, he right next to Christ. He he the only one to go talk to Jesus, and y'all gotta y'all can't never see Jesus. But the Bible say you can though. The Bible says that Jesus is the mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. There's no name under heaven whereby you must be saved but the name of Jesus. You pray in the name of Jesus. You cast out devils in the name of Jesus. You don't need nobody next to you, with you, coercing you, leading you. You can go straight to the throne through Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. But somehow we get we getting tricked in the religion. And you got one man out here losing his mind, and he dictating it to the entire church. It's crazy to me, man. It's crazy to me. It's crazy to me. I, I get structure. I get religious structure. But there's a point in time where you have to say, this is going beyond what the Bible is telling us. You, you're usurping authority over what Christ has said. What people have wrote about Jesus. I, I mean, unless I'm smoking crack, I don't know nowhere in the Bible where the apostles, when they created the new church from all the way from Peter forward, did they do anything that I see them doing religiously in the Catholic Church? And we look at the foundation of the Trinitarian doctrine at the Nicene Council 320-some years after Jesus. And now we see the Pope acting a fool. It it, it don't bother me that much because I'm, I'm not really, I don't really fall in the Catholic thing. But it ain't just Catholics. I want to say Catholics, the Catholic religion, not the people that say they're Catholic. And it's not it's not just Catholic. You think Protestant church is any better? I would argue on average probably Protestant churches are worse. At least you know the cat, the Pope is nutty and certain bishops in the churches, in the, in the, in the, the cathedrals or whatever, and some of them are nutty, but for the most part, I'm pretty sure they're doing what they're supposed to do religiously because there's religious structure. In the Protestant church, they they wilding out. They wilding out. It get, it get, it, it, it's like girls going wild. It's church going wild. People just doing anything in the church. People preaching anything. 
I heard a prominent preacher. This dude is like, in the black community, this dude is like him. He, which I would argue that he should be intelligent. He could not articulate and made up a weird analogy of why people should leave him alone and let him celebrate Christmas. It's like, look, if you want to celebrate Christmas, it's fine. But if you don't understand the pagan origin of Christmas, you might want to look it up. And, and, and it does matter that there's a pagan origin. So you, so you make sure that if you're not trying to relive or expose yourself to pagan theology and worship, you might want to know what's pagan about Christmas so you can avoid it if that's what you so choose. You, you have to know that Easter is, is, is a pagan holiday. Ladies and gentlemen, you, I mean, we have to be apprised of these things. And when you know it's a pagan holiday and you get the pagan origin from it, you can still do your thing, but just at least know where you stand. At least know what you're representing. Oh, St. Nick and all this stuff. Presence under the tree. All, all these things is a pagan mixed with the birth of Jesus. Now, I'm not against it. I just know where it stands. This is a pagan holiday. I want to make sure that when I'm talking to the Lord about this, Lord, I, I'm, I don't, I, I'm, I'm denying the pagan origin, and I want to focus on you, and, and, and I want to focus on the blessings for my children during this season. I want to bless people. I want to, I want to make it about that and not about this pagan theology. But at least know where you stand so you're not out here lost when the trumpets sound and you and you still confused. Stop following religion. Have a relationship with God. The book has already been written. Read the book. Pray to God through Christ Jesus and things will be revealed to you that you need to know. And revelation comes through reading. There's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing that, that, that happens to you in your life that isn't explicitly in the Bible. Whether it's analogous or whether it's direct or whether it's through a parable or whether God reveal your situation through another person of the Bible, King David or somebody else. You read the scripture and God will guide you in the right direction through the scripture. Quit listening to these these people that don't have their salvation straight trying to tell you about salvation. Hold the phone.